Hi, I'm Andy Beck. I'm an artist and photographer based here in Teesdale in the North Pennines of England. In this series of short films, I'm going to show you how I converted my Nissan NV200 into a camper van and mobile studio. The films show the various stages of the process. Now, I'm no expert, I've never converted one of these camper vans before, so there will be trials and errors in these films. I hope you get information and inspiration that you can adapt for yourself if you're thinking of converting not only a Nissan NV200, but any other sort of small camper van. Feel free to leave questions or your own ideas in the comments boxes below, and wherever necessary, I'll give you a reply as soon as I can. The whole of this conversion has cost me just over £1,100. So here you'll see what you can do for that sort of money. Here's the film. Well, look, the first job that I want to do here is take out all of the seats and the carpet, the seat belts, and remove the, uh, the ceiling panel. So I'm left with a, a blank canvas and I can see exactly what I need to do onto the inside of the vehicle um, to convert it into the camper van. The seats are um, uh, fixed in, but of course they're, they're versatile, so they do move. So they'll take a bit of folding, and it's obviously just going to be a selection of, of bolts to undo and either replace or fill in holes in the floor. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll crack on with it and see how we go. Straightforward, these little plastic clips. You use a flat-headed screwdriver and they'll uh, pop off the plastic and reveal the bolts for the fittings for the seat belts. Keep them together into little bags or uh, boxes or something so that you know that each bolt goes with the right seat belt. The intention is that once I've taken them all out, I will uh, tidy them up and um, photograph them and put them on eBay or somewhere and sell them because <laughs> these, these seats are practically new. So um, they're not going to sit here and uh, gather dust. I'll get them online and of course that money comes back into the pot to pay for the conversion. The first thing I came across was removing the seat belt and the seat belt secured obviously by uh, pretty strong bolts down the bottom. And the first thing I can see is that when I take this bolt out, which is sort of fixed to the, or the catch of the seat belt, is that this bolt goes right through the bodywork and it reveals a hole to the outside world. So I've read somewhere that people put these um, bolts back in to obviously seal up the hole. You don't want water coming in uh, through the bottom of the vehicle. But uh, I'm gonna leave them attached to the uh, seat belt and remove it in totally. And I'll come back to this hole here uh, later on because the vehicle's not going anywhere for now. And I'll, I'll find some way of sealing that hole up, either with silicon or something like that or a grommet to make sure that that hole is well sealed from, from uh, uh, water ingress. I'll take out the wheel arch cover. Uh, I have plans to, to recover uh, some of the interior when I've taken out the very rear seat, it has been attached to the wheel arch and even though I've taken off all the, the, the fittings with the bolts, the bolts uh, that secure the, the seat to the frame actually come up through a, a, a plate here. They serve no purpose so they can just be um, hacked sort of.
Well, that's the two rear seats taken out, and uh, there were no real issues, quite straightforward. Just need a little bit of common sense and don't, don't go at it like a bull in a china shop. And I can already see that the middle row of seats are much easier. They're just held on by bolts on the on the way that they flip forward. So none of this um, connected to the, the, the framework of the van. So that's the next job. Seats all out, no problem. One last thing to do is up in the roof area behind the ceiling panel is the last roll of uh, seat belt for the middle row. That just means taking off the panel and undoing the seat belt from the ceiling. And then what I will do is put this panel back on for now, uh, give it a bit of warmth and, and, and uh, soundproofing until I know what I want to do with the ceiling, how I want to go with that, but more about that later. Meantime, just to get the ceiling panel off. What I've done is I've just started from the back with the ceiling panel and prized off the, the um, pegs that hold it on. And by doing so, I can now get into the seat belt and its holder undo the bolts from here and then uh, remove it and pop the, the ceiling panel back on without going and taking the whole of the ceiling panel off because there's an interior light further along which would have just been a bit more complicated to undo and put back on. So I'll, I'll reach it all from here and uh, that'll be that job done. So that's it. Seat belts and all the seats out. Nothing complicated, just the hole here to think about, one on each side that exposes the van interior to the underside of the, of the uh, wheel arch. But uh, a grommet and some silicone probably do that. And uh, yeah. My next job, which won't take long, is to lift the carpet. I do intend saving the uh, trim and see if I can use those again, but the carpet will uh, be resold. Straightforward poppers over there, the trim, the little poppers on the trim here, just need a little flat screwdriver and they pop out. So I've got to go and uh, do all those. And then uh, once the carpet's out, that'll be the back of the vehicle clear, ready to redesign. So here we have it, the carpet is out now. I have removed the brackets which would fix the, the folding part of the seats. Two at the back here, three halfway down in the middle. And I've removed the trims. I'll go down to this side. And I've removed the trim from here, the far door and the back door. And hopefully I'll be able to use those when I come to lay the floor and the carpet that's not for a while yet one of the things i have noticed that in here uh, just behind the driver's seat is a, a panel with three screws on it and an arrow and that when it's taken off reveals the fuel pump i believe it's a fuel pump so <coughs> ideally there needs to be some sort of access hatch in the floor that i'm going to lay down so that this is still accessible. It'd be pointless laying a good floor with wood and vinyl and then finding, wouldn't you know it, that this fuel pump needs looking at. And even though you could probably get to it from underneath, this access cover here is for a reason. So I'll look at a way of uh, getting through to that if uh, I need to in an emergency. But yeah, that's the 
floor rack now and or well, the carpet out should I say and the floor and the interior basically cleared of all ancillary stuff ready for refurbishment. Hopefully that short film will give you a good idea of how I completed that stage in the process of converting my Nissan NV200. Do check out my channel for the other films which show all the other stages of the conversion from start to finish. If you've enjoyed the film do click the like button and hopefully you may feel inclined to even subscribe to this channel. You may also be interested in my other work, my proper work, my painting and photography. If so, do have a look at my website. The address is www.andybeckimages.co.uk. Thanks for watching.